I mean by intelligent mobility is the cost-effective movement of people and goods. So um, that's what we're interested in, in the Transport Systems Catapult, looking at the integration of transport modes, road, rail, sea and air, connecting them together. And what we see is um, technology emerging, ready for application, and a growing market emerging globally, which we've estimated to be £900 billion per annum by the mid-2020s. And part of our role is to help UK-based business to capture a bigger share of that huge emerging market. So we see a number of themes coming out uh, within intelligent mobility. We see the customer experience being part of it. Uh, that's the end-to-end -end journey. So many journeys involve several modes of transport. So at connection points, it's often a stress point. How can we provide information to make it easier for consumers to travel? That's one theme. Um, another theme is resilience. So resilience of the transport network itself, weather uh, dependency. Um, we see another emergence in terms of smart infrastructure, so sensors embedded within the transport system to give information on the state of each asset um, as another theme. We see autonomous systems as another theme that's coming through. So uh, the, the big banner headline is, is driverless cars, but there are many stages of autonomy, um, which again we see uh, application for. We need to be conscious of the, the, the big issues, the macro issues, so population growth in the UK. So the uh, UK is projected to grow to um, nearly 80, 80 million people um, within the next, uh, by 2050. If we take congestion, for example, at the moment in, in peak times, everyone wants to travel roughly at the same time. Huge demand in, term, in terms of those transport modes that use electricity consumption. Well, if we think about the whole system, there are means by which we can minimise that, that impact. So let's say we're, more of us are driving electric cars. More of us drive to stations with electric cars with a fully charged battery, probably. If there's a way of drawing down that energy to feed into the railway system during that peak demand period and trickle charging back so that when consumers come back to their car in the evening, uh, it's still fully charged, it's transparent to them. But that's a way of, of dealing with that particular issue. So that's just one example. As part of the Catapult model, um, we're very interested in connecting researchers and research institutions to industry. So in terms of the progression of technology, there's a term called technology readiness levels. Um, universities work at the early stage concepts, good ideas, uh, test them in the lab environment, simplistically. Um, industry is interested in, in taking risk out of new technology and the application of it. So there's a gap in the middle. So part of our role is, is to bridge that gap between academia and industry and help to lubricate the process of developing those technologies ready for application. The current generation of catapults, of which Transport Systems is one, um, if I draw on my own example of the big projects that we have got moving in the relatively short time since we've been in operation. So we've been in operation for less than a year, so we're quite young as an organisation. One example is for, on behalf of the Automotive Council, the automotive industry, uh, we are um, building the first prototype units for um, autonomous pods. Uh, as a trial in Milton Keynes, connecting the railway station to the shopping area. It's about a mile. Uh, it's slightly uphill and most people don't want to walk it. Uh, so we're using that as a test bed to demonstrate the, the technology application of autonomy. Another example um, that we have in transport systems is um, departure planning information. So again, we've, we've worked with the uh, aviation industry. They have a future airspace strategy. Um, the application of real-time information is a big theme for us within intelligent mobility and departure planning information. We've gone live now with um, application at uh, London City Airport as a uh, first of a trial of seven regional airports to give better, more accurate uh, actual takeoff time of aircraft feeding into national and European uh, traffic control systems. Ninety percent of our journeys in this country are, are by road, so the car is still very dominant. Um, cars consume fuel, uh, uh, petrol and, and diesel, 
And whilst the automotive industry has done a great job to reduce their carbon footprint measured in, in grams of carbon dioxide per kilometre, uh, so they've reduced that substantially over the last few years, uh, it's still an issue. And as we have more demand for transport, that, that is a key sustainability um, issue for us to address. So what we see is emergence of um, more fuel efficient ways of getting around in a car. The emergence of electric cars would be an example. Now it depends on how you generate your electricity, but um, I've just bought an electric car as an example and I've tracked the running costs of my previous car and my current car and it's a 90% reduction in cost and in terms of carbon footprint the current average UK fleet of new car sales I forget the number exactly, it's about 130 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometre uh, my new electric car, which does have a range extender on it, so it's got a little motorcycle engine in it, so it burns a little bit of fuel to get me in that extra range. But the carbon footprint there is 13, 13 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometre. So a reduction of 90% um, is, is an example of how we can address the sustainability problem. Stay with engineering. Um, so it's a great time to be in engineering. At, uh, at government level, we've heard um, many politicians talk about rebalancing the economy, um, a discussion around uh, too much in the UK of, of dependence on service industries, rebalancing back towards uh, manufacturing and uh, creating wealth. Um, engineers are very well placed to work in those environments. The second thing I'd recommend is do something you enjoy. I've had the opportunity of working in the automotive industry, um, in off-highway automotive and uh, in the rail industry and now integrated transport in my current role. Um, and I would say that I don't know of any other profession where you get the same sense of job satisfaction as you do as an engineer. So I've, I've been involved in developing new products, designing and developing new products and launching them. And the sense of satisfaction of knowing that, that thousands of people are buying the product that you have developed is fantastic. And I don't know of any other career that, that can uh, achieve that. So stay with engineering.